morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's uh, been very pleasant and enjoyable to sit and listen uh, from 2.30 in the morning until uh, <laughs> almost 4.30. Uh, and, I, and I think that the, the fact that I'm, I'm here at this, uh, this hour uh, speaks to the appreciation I have for the work of the, of the ODI and, and, and for this report. I, this is a landmark report, obviously, in, in terms of connecting analysis of, of, of global poverty with, with hazards, <laughs> risk, uh, climate change. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to, to, to be here at the launch of the report. Uh, I think I will focus my comments primarily in the poverty area for obvious reasons, because the, uh, as Amanda has already suggested, the international future simulation that we've developed uh, was, was used primarily in that area. The international future simulation <laughs> does represent change also in other issue areas, including uh, things like uh, governance and, and, and capacity, adaptive capability, uh, and, and some representations of the pressures uh, from energy systems and agricultural systems on, on climate. Uh, but, but I'm going to focus on poverty. And I, I think to some degree I'll pick up on uh, the thread that, that Julia uh, just uh, 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 developed with respect to uncertainty in terms of our forecasts. Uh, obviously, with respect to uh, poverty forecasts, there's also a great deal of uncertainty going forward. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the period of the Millennium Development Goals. We've seen uh, a great deal of success in terms of the uh, reduction from 1990 until 2015 uh, 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 coming up. We've more than met the, the goal of reducing the proportion of population globally uh, living on less than a dollar and a quarter a day uh, by 50%. Uh, in fact, we've, we've met that already by, by today. And, and uh, one of the, the things we have to recognize is that our meeting that, that goal early uh, was heavily dependent upon the performance in China. Uh, and uh, that performance was by no means back in 1990 anywhere near as certain as maybe some think it is now that we look back. There was a great deal of, of uh, possibility that could take a different course in the, in the 80s and into the 90s. And we, as we look forward, the, the international future simulation is actually somewhat less optimistic uh, than some of the forecasts that are coming from other sources, uh, uh, Brookings or, or even some of the World Bank uh, forecasts <laughs> with respect to the, uh, the, 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 the movement forward. Uh, we're optimistic in an absolute sense. We foresee a very substantial reduction, even in our base case, much less the optimistic scenario. Uh, for poverty over the period between now and 2030. Uh, but uh, we're a little bit less certain uh, about the continued speed of, of, of that reduction. And to be entirely uh, direct about it, I think that the emerging target of 3% uh, of, of, the, uh, of, of the global population or less in, in uh, uh, poverty, that is uh, less than a dollar and a quarter a day by 2030, the one that's, be, that's emerging rapidly from UN discussions of post-millennium development goals, I think that target is going to be extremely hard to reach uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, to, to, to put this in, 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 in context, for those of you who are not poverty forecasters, and I assume that's, that's most of the people sitting there this morning, uh, poverty forecasts are, are, are made primarily by looking at two key variables, uh, two proximate variables. The first of those is the average level of household income or uh, actually in many cases, as in our case, the level of household consumption. And the second variable is the distribution of that across the population, as often measured by something like a Gini coefficient. Uh, uh, but it's more important, it's important not just to look at the a single coefficient for uh, the, the uh, distribution of poverty, it's important to look at the shape of that distribution. And most forecasts use something like what is called a log normal distribution. But those, those two numbers are going forward, the, the level of household consumption and the distribution of that across country specific and even regions uh, or province state specific populations uh, are, the, are the fundamental drivers. And most forecasts uh, look to uh, the, the 
past patterns of those and, and extrapolate those in, 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 in fairly direct ways. Now we've been very, up until 2008, up until the Great Recession, the period of the early, 2000, uh, early 2000s, uh, uh, the 21st century has been very good in terms of economic performance around the world. The developing countries took a substantial jump forward and, and movement towards convergence in economic performance uh, with the, the, the middle and upper middle income countries uh, during the first uh, eight years of the, of, of the last decade. Uh, and some of our extrapolations, I think, rely a little bit too much on the expectation of a return to uh, those same growth rates. We expect some uh, bounce back, obviously, but how fast that will be and how uh, uh, prolonged that will be is, is subject to a great number of uncertainties. And the same thing is obviously true on the distribution side. Uh, that uh, The patterns of distribution vary greatly across countries. Uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, the, not just the levels, but the trends in, in, in distribution. Uh, we know, for instance, that in China, the, the uh, inequality has actually increased quite substantially at the same time that the, the income levels have been going up quite substantially, offsetting some of the, the progress in, in poverty, redu poverty reduction. Uh, most forecasts rely upon basically a business as usual, a constant assumption of inequality going forward. So you put together a fairly optimistic uh, uh, economic growth performance based upon the early years of the century and a relatively stable distribution performance, and you get very optimistic forecasts for, for poverty reduction. But the international future simulation, what we bring to the table, uh, and I think uh, uh, what I appreciate the, uh, 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 the Overseas Development Institute's use of, was the, the, the complex interrelationships between the, the economic system, the demographic system, uh, energy, agriculture, sociopolitical change, as well uh, as poverty reduction, and poverty reduction as a result of all of those things. Let me throw. Let me let me indicate some of the the uncertainties and some of the challenges. On the economic growth side, we know that there has been one uh, uh, disruption after another in countries around the world: uh, financial crises, uh, uh, imbalances, uh, and we know that there will be a number of these going forward between now and 2030. Uh, we know that there are going to be some. Uh, a, a trade and current account imbalances that require adjustments within countries. And those adjustments almost invariably squeeze consumption, household consumption when they occur. We know that there are fiscal imbalances, uh, including some of those in countries like India right now, uh, where expenditures are exceeding uh, revenues and that those will cause uh, uh, pressures for adjustments. And those adjustments also almost invariably squeeze household consumption. So there are some reasons in terms of those, those kinds of imbalances uh, for a certain amount of, of concern or caution with respect to uh, highly optimistic reductions in poverty. Not that we're not going to achieve very substantial ones between now and 2030, but they might not be on exactly the same course we've seen uh, in the early part of the of the 21st century, another uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a related kind of issue on the on the growth side, uh, and related again to imbalances internationally, we know that the that the level of foreign assistance coming into countries in the the lowest income uh, uh, parts of the world, as a portion of the of the of their economies, is actually going down. Uh, economic growth in those countries is fortunately larger now, faster now than that in the countries uh, that are, are providing assistance. Uh, so uh, the the aid coming from from uh, United Kingdom through DFID and uh, the United States through USAID and elsewhere uh, is not keeping up and it won't be able to keep up as our economies grow more slowly uh, than those of the uh, even of the low income countries. So there will be adjustments that will be made in the current account balances as a result of that slowing impact of, of foreign assistance. It will have to be made up for by foreign direct investment and other inflows, which are also uh, subject to uh, uh, volatility and subject to disruption. 
On the, on the distribution side, as we've looked, for instance, at, at India, uh, and we've looked at the, the prospects for poverty reduction uh, there specifically, uh, if, if we're going to have a, a, another success story in the next 15 or 20 years, like we had in the last 15 to 25 years, uh, uh, based heavily upon China's performance, we're going to have to look, as this report suggests, very heavily to India. And we are a little bit uh, uncertain about the, the ability of India to maintain even its present income distribution uh, for a variety of reasons. One is that in, in terms of, in, in countries where there have been accelerations of economic performance like that of China in recent years, uh, income, has often, income distribution has often actually deteriorated. Uh, and that slows down progress with respect to the reduction of poverty in the lowest income levels. Uh, uh, looking at our model in more detail, uh, we, has, we see, for instance, that one of the challenges that India is going to face is, is with its education uh, 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 advance, keeping up with the change in its economic structure and the need for a more highly skilled professionals and, and labor force. Uh, right now, our, our forecast, because it, we do combine education and health uh, and other, and other fa human development factors along with uh, uh, capital and, 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 and labor advance, uh, we, we are, are seeing that, that right now the, the advance of education in India is probably not quite keeping up with the advance in the economy and the demand for those kinds of more skilled uh, labor, and that that, in fact, could contribute also to a, uh, a reduction in the potential, uh, uh, excuse me, let me say that a little bit differently, a, a uh, deterioration in the income distribution because uh, the uh, demand for uh, professional labor and high skilled labor uh, outstripping the supply of it could in fact uh, accelerate the share of the economy that's taken by skilled labor relative to unskilled labor, uh, a, a factor that, that is negative with respect to the income distribution. Uh, the overall point I'm trying to make here, and again tying it back to what Julia and others have said this morning, is that we are optimistic there is a great deal that's happening in terms of poverty reduction. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be very cognizant of all of the threats to that progress. And one of the things that I would emphasize again is the, uh, the importance of, of, of approaches like that have, that have been taken by the ODI, of looking beyond the, the most proximate drivers, the, the simplest drivers of, of change in poverty, that is to say, uh, income and, and income distribution, and looking through their scenarios more deeply at some of the, uh, the factors that are closer to the policy levers that drive changes in income and distribution. And I think pursuing that avenue uh, is going to be important going forward. Let's not just uh, uh, do more extrapolative analyses. Let's look at where the leverage points are. Let's look at where the risk factors are and continue to, to, uh, to improve our forecasts and improve our analyses. Thank I think I'll stop there. Barry, thank you so much for that. That's very helpful. Um, and, and I think a very nice segue into the wider discussion now. Um, I should hold my hands up as chair. I have let uh, the speakers run over, but I, I think you'd all agree they were such fantastic presentations that that was, uh, that was fully justified. What I'd like to do now, I think, is to take questions in clusters of three to four. And I would ask people to keep their contributions and their questions um, relatively short, certainly if they last for more than a minute and a half, I, I'll, I'll, I'll start fidgeting in my chair, which you can take as a sign that uh, I'd like you to move more quickly. So let's, uh, we'll start over this side, please, at the back. And if you could say who you are, 